So back I am. Um, actually, I was not supposed to talk today, but uh, we had a guy from MedSafe who uh, was supposed to, to come, and uh, he did not come. And because I like their project, I will talk to you about not their project, but what they want really to do. And there are different implementations, but theirs are quite fine, but I will tell you later. So, I start with this assumption that the internet is broken. It's broken in many ways, and uh, maybe most of you have realized that. It's broken because there are many points of failures of the internet. There is a concentration of internet providers. I know that uh, FDN is working on that. There is a concentration of data centers because you have most services hosted in data centers today. And this is uh, sch schematics between internet access providers and data centers. There are a lot of interconnections. And data, um, internet providers take this as, as a pretext to try to charge also service providers. And we come with an internet which is linked at different speeds between so the internet access providers and the data center. So here is a gross way of representing the internet economy. You have the, the merchant site, which sells services or goods, <coughs> who needs to be known, so he pays for advertisement to an advertisement agency who pays a site which leaves from audience, like newspapers, for example, and uh, to optimize the placement of ads to, the, to those kind of sites, they need profiling, which is done by a third kind of site, which collects personal data and provides profiles to the ad agency who places ads for the first type site. Profiling is useful to the user because it reduces the clutter of untargeted advertising. The less targeting you have, the less profiling you have, the more advertising you need for the same efficiency. The wrong thing with that is that personal data is collected behind the user back. It's not, the user usually doesn't know. And it goes into third party hands. And that the value of this profiling goes to the type one sites, which I had on the previous diagram. I will talk further about the service concept. The service concept is everything that the user sees. I'm not going to talk about servers. I'm going to talk about the service. The whole time way of doing a service was to have data and processing done on the server side and displaying HTML, HTML and CSS on the client side. But in time, browsers have become more clever, and we have mobile phones. And now, more and more processing is done inside the browser or inside the native applications, which means that the service providers provide the application, which is executed on your side, but also the storage of the data. Here I will come, I'm going to talk about uh, a few problems with this way of organizing things. Is that if you have more than one service provider, each one provides his application and stores your data, but more than once. There is a lot more value in having data sharing, which is one data store and multiple applications coming from the same service provider. This is what is currently happening with, happening with uh, Google, for example, which provides lots of applications, but they all use your data. And this is inter interoperability. You have 
all these database on the right and all the applications on the left which use the same data. And it creates a lot of value to the user because it eases a lot of operations. And we come to a word that Tristan loves. We come to silos because service providers keep their users because they hold the data. So we try to do different things about that. We did local storage, which means that the data is stored inside your browser and the multiple application can use this data, but you don't have the service provider accessing your data. You just have your data inside your browser. And this allows it eventually applications to interoperate because they will share the same data, even though they come from different application providers. So we, we turn from a service provider to an application provider. Then you have remote storage. Yay! <laughs> and uh, this is a great idea because it allows applications to use the same data even though they are used on different devices. But remote storage requires a third kind of actor, which is the storage provider, which can either be self-hosted or you can rent space at someone else. And uh, my concern about this is the adoption, because you have to take people and to tell them, use this model and use a storage provider. So the path to success actually is long, and when you come to success, the more users you have, the more cost you have, because you still have to usually store the user data. There is a problem with this concentration. It's also, there is a vulnerability, because if the data is stored in the same place for many users, it creates uh, a, a target for attackers, and the concentration of data allows also to put black boxes on the way and to censor and surve make surveillance on the internet. So this is why internet is broken. Um, what I wanted to show is that the key in that is the, is the data, and if we just find a way to store data without relying on centralized servers being them self-hosting. Or Imagine that every device connected to the internet shares a bit of storage with the rest of the world, and that from the rest of the world, you just have a key value database accessible. You want to store a value, you store it, and you have a key. And when you want to access it, you just put the key and you have the value. And this allows basically to reconstruct all the services we have today, but without having data somewhere precisely. It's a bit everywhere. It's redundant. It means that when you cut a wire, when you unplug a computer, the data is still available. It's uh, encrypted. It leaves your computer encrypted. It is store encrypted and it comes back encrypted. No one knows it except you. Um, it would allow to change the way things work today. Uh, for the user, it will not change a lot because it basically replaces, it's meant to replace the HTTP. When you want to access a resource, instead of going through a domain name, uh, going through an IP address. The, the resource is not designed by, it's not located by, by a path. It's not located by a server and a path to the resource. It's located just by a key, and the system finds the way to the resource. So I'm going to cite just two projects which implement this uh, kind of technology. One is made safe, uh, and the other is IPFS, which stands for Interplanetary File System. Uh, both uh, are intended to provide key store value uh, databases, and uh, 
they would allow the internet to work in a different way. Questions? <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. So, um, I mean, the, the addressing of, of your blogs or whatever you are storing. Um, yes. How, how does it happen when you say you want to get rid of HTTP because you also want to get rid of DNS? Hmm? Um, so, how do you like, target or hide your data? How do you hold your data? When you store, you want what a human readable key? I don't know. Do you, do you mention URIs or something else like hashes? Yes, it's only hashes. It's only hashes. How about humans? Yes, hashes is quite difficult to remember. If you Look at how you use the internet today. Most people use a search engine to start with. They don't use anymore the URL. They use a search engine. And uh, we can rely on that. Yes. OK. Next? Next presentation or next uh, question? BitTorrent is doing something called Maelstrom, which is about sharing the browser cache. So it's very efficient at distributing content, but it's not for storing, it's just for caching. Um, I don't know if BitTorrent has projects similar to MedSafe about storing things. BitTorrent is not fully decentralized as the original protocol because they still need hosting the torrent. Yes. And uh, they Later, they came with a few alternatives, but it's, uh, it, I cannot see it as a replacement for HTTP because it's not designed to be so. It's designed for large files. It's designed with uh, long latency. Uh, and here, it's more meant at uh, low latency, small data, small amounts of data. Um, it's really designed to, to, to replace HTTP in most cases. And for the, to start with, it can be a good solution to synchronize, because in synchronization, you need mutable data, but you don't need short latency. A piece of data is, is divided into chunks, and we add, well, in the best, in the ideal way, you add a few chunks of data for um, erasure codes. And yes, erasure codes. This is what is used in GSM, for example, for uh, lost radio packets, uh, corruptions of data. And the magic with this erasure codes is that if you add, for example, three erasure codes, you can remove whatever three pieces you want from the whole set, and you can reconstruct the, the data. 
which means that you don't need much redundancy. You just need a few bytes more because the machines which uh, store the data know each other. And if one disappears, it can add another one. You, you want two users to share the same data? There, there, there is that too. This is something to be built uh, on top of it. Uh, I'm just talking about the low level thing. HTTP is just low level, and you can reconstruct everything uh, on top of it. This is uh, intent. You, if you store your data in an system, and The key to retrieve something, well, there, there is more than one level of encryption. The first level is the key to retrieve the value because when you store data, the people who are the data stores don't have to know what is stored at their place. This is not for just for privacy reason, but it's also for uh, liability. They don't have to be able to know what's on their computer, so they are not liable for it. On top of that, you can add other layers of encryption, but this is independent. Um, one good thing is that when you store uh, a blob of data, the key you use is the hash of the data. So you hash the data, you encrypt it with this hash, and this is a key to retrieve it, which means that if more than one person wants to store the same data, it will not be stored more than once. So this is deduplication. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.